Hey guys, today we're going to talk about this gun, a Colt 1903 that was owned by Captain Louis Kukela, who fought in World War I and is the recipient of two Medals of Honor. That's right, not one, but two Medals of Honor. You're going to want to see this. Today is Veterans Day, and of course, we at Legacy Collectibles always want to honor uh, our veterans. And so, I, first of all, uh, for those of you who serve, thank you for your service. And also, I want to do a shout out to my nephew, Scout, who just joined the U.S. Army. Uh, we wish him the best, and thank you for your service. Now, what better day to talk about a gun that was owned by, I don't know if it was awarded, we're gonna talk more about the gun, I'm going to talk about the Medal of Honor because he was the recipient of two Medals of Honor. I'm gonna talk about the Medal of Honor, uh, Veterans Day, and a 1903 Colt. But some personal reflection, I feel like a very blessed man. But one of the things that I regret in my life is that I never served. And that's because if you're a young person watching this, you know this feeling. When I was in my youth, or youths, uh, in my youth, I was always in a hurry to go move on to the next thing, meaning I couldn't wait to be 16 so I could drive, and then I couldn't wait to be 18, and then I couldn't wait to be 21, and then I couldn't wait to get out of college, and then I couldn't wait to get a, my first job and meet that special woman. Always in a hurry to move forward in life. But as I look back on my life, there was a lot of years that were wasted. And I'm sure you, you can relate to that. I, I wasted so much time and energy and years over nothing. And I certainly wish I had taken at least two years off from my life to serve. So those of you who made that decision, I want to honor you today and also reflect on the fact if you're a young person and thinking about service, I think it's something that you, would really benefit you as well as our country. Okay, let's get into the content. First, let's talk about the Medal of Honor, a great topic for Veterans Day. Of course, it's, uh, if you're in the United States, I say of course, outside of the United States, every country has its highest Medal of Honor. In the United States, that's the Medal of Honor. It's awarded by the president uh, upon recommendation of ob obviously senior officers. There's only about, uh, here's the exact numbers you can see in front of you, but it's about 3,500 uh, recipients of the Medal of Honor dating back to the Civil War. Now if you look at this graph you can see it's actually the very early days, Civil War and the what we would call the Indian Wars. More than half of them were given out in those first two categories. For, uh, so they were given out a lot more liberally back then. So I, I just want to say that in the early days of the Medal of Honor, they gave out a lot more of them. But after after the Indian Wars you can see they became very stingy with the awarding of the Medal of Honor because they really wanted it to be only those who um, were, showed the most valor, the most bravery, the most sacrifice, including some that were given the Medal of Honor after they died in action. Uh, you, you can see World War I, which is what we're talking about with Louis Kukela. He received two, by the way, of the about 3,500 that were awarded the Medal of Honor, only 19 received two. We're going to talk about that in a minute, but uh, World War I, it was 127 uh, recipients of uh, the Medal of Honor, and then you can see there's a big spike during World War II. Of course, we were in that conflict a lot longer and had a lot more men involved. Now, going back to uh, with the Medal of Honor, there's actually three variations. In doing research for this, you think I knew everything? I didn't. There's actually three variations. The uh, Army Medal of Honor, the Navy Medal of Honor, which includes the U.S. Marines, and the third variation is the Air Force Medal of Honor. Now, that was not instituted in, until 1965, so during World War I and World War II, there were only two variations. Sergeant, at the time, Sergeant Louis Kukela, received the Army and the Navy because he was in the U.S. Marine Corps. So let's take a, a, a look at why he was awarded the medal. Okay, let's talk a little bit about Louis Kukela. What I love about this guy is he's an immigrant to the United States. He came from Croatia. Ethnically, he was Serbian, came from Croatia. There was a Baltic region. There was a, a lot of violence and unrest. And so I'm sure his family came to the United States uh, for 
safety and security. Here's a picture of him here. Uh, he came over as a uh, young man and was able to join the, the service. I'm sure he had broken English. Uh, that may be a stereotype, but I can just imagine that English was obviously his second language, spoke with um, broken English, but was able to join the United States Marine Corps and serve in World War I. He came to the United States in 1913 and then joined the Marine Corps in 1918. He was shipped over to uh, Europe and it was while he was in Europe that he distinguished himself in combat. Now, the two Medal of Honors are, are the center of our focus, but he also received four silver stars. You can see he has a lot of medals from other countries as well. So his, uh, his chest area is filled with a lot of metal. He received two medals of honor, but it was for the same event, which happened on July 18th of 1918. And let me read the commendation for you so that we get it right. He was serving in the 66th company of the 2nd Marine Division. Uh, he was in France. Uh, his company was advancing through the woods. They met strong resistance from the enemy, in particular, uh, several machine gun nests. Sergeant, and by the way, he was a sergeant then, uh, and they called him Gunny. Now, he's not the only Gunny in the service because it seems like there was a lot of Gunnies, but um, he was a gunnery sergeant, and they called him Gunny. Against the advice of his officers, so basically he did this totally on his own and they told him not to do it, but he crawled uh, around the flank and made his way behind the German lines. Uh, there he came uh, face to face with uh, two machine gun nests. Disregarding the warnings of his comrades, he succeeded to rush the machine gun position, and killing or driving off the crew with his bayonet. Uh, he then took the German hand grenades uh, from the, the uh, machine gun nest that he just liberated and he threw them into an adjacent machine gun nest and captured or killed all of the Germans in that um, emplacement as well. Uh, he captured four of the prisoners and captured two machine guns. So for his valor, valor and bravery, he was awarded two Medals of Honor, one from the Navy, which makes sense, U.S. Marine Corps, and one from the Army. I honestly don't know why the Army, other than he was probably fighting with um, soldiers from the U.S. Army and the U.S. Marine Corps, and they both awarded him a Medal of Honor. Uh, he was promoted eventually to second lieutenant, first lieutenant, and he left France as a first lieutenant, came back to the United States, uh, was stationed throughout the United States, spent a lot of time in Philadelphia, which is my hometown, and it's there where he met and married his wife. Um, he also spent a lot of time in Norfolk, but he was stationed in the Philippines for a while, did see some action in the Philippines. I believe there was a, uh, a rebellion uh, in the Philippines from time to time, before and after World War I, but he eventually ended up in Haiti. There was an insurgency in Haiti where the rebels uh, uh, tried to overthrow the government. There was a lot of unrest and the rebels were particularly brutal uh, in terms of killing civilians, raping wi women, killing children. So the United States decided to send in the U.S. Marines to quell the violence and bring peace to Haiti, reestablishing the government. Uh, he went over there and at that point he was a first lieutenant. Just to reinforce the adage that our heroes often have feet of clay, I do want to mention that while he was in Haiti, he was uh, accused of shooting prisoners. Uh, he was in charge of holding prisoners and they ended up shot. And I don't want to make light of that, but I'm sure he saw a lot of violence and some things that sickened him. Um, and he had seen a lot in World War I, uh, and uh, he may or may not have been involved in shooting prisoners. And for that, he was never put on trial out of deference for his service to the country. He was never put on trial, but he was demoted back to sergeant. Uh, eventually, he earned his way back to first lieutenant, uh, then became a captain. And that's where he, he was a captain when he received the gun I'm about to show you. And he retired in 1940 as a major. Now, retired in 1940, he was working in Norfolk. And of course, World War, we had not entered World War II yet. But after his retirement, he did come back and serve in administrative positions here in the United States during World War II. So he retired a second time after the end of World War II. 
Now to the crux of the matter. Many of you only watch my channel to see the guns, so here is the gun. Others of you watch because you want to be inspired about Veterans Day and bully for you. Um, here is the gun. It's stunningly beautiful, and here's the downside. It's been refinished. Not sure when or why, because it doesn't look like there was pitting and it was buffed off. Um, I, I just don't know, but um, here's, here's the uh, money shot, as I like to say. Uh, Louis Kukela, Captain, U.S. Marine Corps. I don't know if he gave this to himself. He bought it and ordered it and gave it to himself, or it was given to him. It was before his retirement. We can see here on the uh, factory letter, I'm not used to it being addressed to a person. Usually it'll say it went to the hardware store, it went to the armory, it went to the Norfolk Navy base. Uh, I, I don't ever recall seeing a uh, factory letter that names a person and that it was engraved at the factory. So he either ordered it for himself or uh, the people he served with ordered it. It was before his retirement, but he was in Norfolk. He was a quartermaster, actually. Being the quartermaster, he would be in charge of ordering things. So I could see where he ordered it or somebody in his uh, that he worked with, uh, one of his comrades, so to speak. Uh, maybe they ordered it, but nonetheless, uh, January of 1937, uh, factory engraved, sent to him. It does have a blued finish. Uh, in my opinion, I, I, I don't have anything documented that says it's, it's been refinished, but I believe it's been refinished. Now, it could have been uh, engraved and refinished at the same time at the factory, but I'm going to assume, uh, I'm going to go with it's been refinished. So you can see it has almost no wear. He obviously didn't use this in action, but this was definitely his gun. Uh, and I mentioned that he continued to serve as a quartermaster in Norfolk until 1940. And then World War II started. And of course, he couldn't sit home and not serve his country. Um, I do find that a lot of immigrants who come here and find freedom are more patriotic uh, than those of us who were born here and take it for granted. But I'm sure he was the type of man that could not sit home while people were fighting and dying in Europe. So he came back and filled in uh, to doing a administrative job, but remember that then fill, uh, freed up a position for someone to go and fight. After World War II, he entered civilian life. Major Louis Kukela retired the second time in 1946, of course, right after the war ended. He served in the U.S. Marine Corps for 32 years and then lived a peaceful life for the next 10 years, having retired in 46. He died in 1956. He lived mostly in the Maryland, Philadelphia area. He died in the Bethesda Naval Hospital and was buried in Arlington National Cemetery. His wife followed him in death only a few months after that. Once again, for all of you who have served or are serving our country, thank you so much.